In making the case for the Keystone XL pipeline, the woman leading the charge has been Alberta's Premier, Alison Redford. And Premier Redford joins me now from Edmonton. Thanks for being with us today. You've been writing pieces for American newspapers, flying down to Washington. How confident are you right now that the Americans are listening to you and that the president will approve the Keystone XL pipeline? Well, I'm very optimistic about the project. Of course, we've taken the time to tell the story of Canada's record with respect to environmental sustainability, Alberta's record with respect to environmental sustainability, and the environmental impact report that we saw on Friday from the State Department was welcome news because it incorporated a lot of the work that we've done and that we've been talking about. You might know that the report specifically refer referred to the Lower Athabasca Regional Plan, which was important work that we did around resource management and an integrated approach to resource development. So we are still very optimistic. We think there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, we respect the regulatory process in the United States, but we want to make sure that all of the information that needs to be there can be part of it. What if the president says no? which of course is still an option. Uh, where does that leave Alberta? Well, Alberta as Canada is an exporting economy and so we have options that we're continuing to pursue. We know that the market will balance out and we've already seen that in some cases there's a product being exported by rail and by truck. We think that's unfortunate because that can have a pretty significant environmental impact as well. But we're also pursuing, as you know, the, uh, the reversal of the pipelines to the east and working very closely and very productively right now with Premier Marois and with Premier Allward to make sure that we're looking to other opportunities. Of course, even in Alberta, with our own economy, we're making sure that it's an integrated, integrated energy economy. We're involved in value added so that we're not only uh, developing uh, uh, different products uh, that can be exported to the United States, but also to other markets. It's certainly important for us to get our product to Tidewater, and we're going to keep pursuing those goals as well. How can you make the case to Americans that you're pushing the bar higher in uh, addressing environmental issues and climate change when your government admits it hasn't met its own emission targets? Well, we've been very frank about that, and one of the things that I've said is that that is part of keeping the bar higher. It wouldn't make an awful lot of sense for us as a government to go out there and mislead people with respect to where we are in the progress. We're still committed to our targets. We still think we can make that progress, but if we have work to do, we're going to acknowledge the fact that we do. Uh, one of the things that's part of what our Minister of Environment doing is putting together another suite of uh, legislation that we think is going to make a tremendous difference in terms of the work that we've done around environmental sustainability. So from our perspective, it's all part of what you have to do. If you want to know where you're going, you have to be honest about where you are. And I don't think Albertans would expect anything less. All right. Premier Redford, thank you so much. Have a good night.